In this lesson, we're going to focus on solving radical equations. So let's start with this example. The square root of 3x plus 1 is equal to 4. If you know what to do, feel free to pause the video and work on this example. So what's the first thing that we need to do? The first thing is we need to get rid of the square root. And the only way to do that is to square both sides. So on the left side, what we now have is 3x plus 1. On the right side, 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. And now let's subtract both sides by 1. So what we now have is 3x is equal to 16 minus 1, which is 15. And then divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to 5. And then if you want to, check your work. So using the original equation, let's replace x with 5. So we have 3 times 5 plus 1. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So 5 is indeed an answer. So x equals 5. Number 2. Square root 7 minus x plus 3 is equal to 5. So what's the first thing we should do in this example? Now we don't want to square both sides yet. We want to move the 3 from the left side to the right side. So let's begin by subtracting both sides by 3. So 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Now at this point, you want to take the square of both sides. If you did it before, you would have to FOIL root 7 minus x plus 3. But now you don't have to do that. So on the left, it's just going to be 7 minus x, and 2 squared is 4. So now let's subtract both sides by 7. And so negative x is 4 minus 7, or negative 3. And if we divide both sides by uh, negative 1, negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. And so that's the answer. And you could check. If you plug it in, 7 minus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. So that's going to work. Try this one. The cube root of x plus 15, let's say it's equal to 3. So this time, instead of squaring both sides, we want to raise both sides to the third power so that the index number of 3 will cancel with the exponent of 3. And so it's going to be x plus 15 is equal to 3 to the third power, which is 27. And now all we need to do is subtract both sides by 15. And so x is 27 minus 15, which is 12. And so that's the answer for that one. And what about this one? 2 square root x is equal to x. What is the value of x? In this example, we can square both sides. The 2 is multiplied to root x. And so we don't have to FOIL anything. 2 squared is 4. And the square of a square root will cancel the square root. So it's just going to be x. On the right side, we have x squared. Now let's subtract 4x from both sides. So on the left, they will cancel. We're going to have 0 on the left. On the right, x squared minus 4x, and which we can factor that. We can take out the GCF, which is x. And so we can see that x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 4. Now, let's check both answers. Let's go back to the original equation. So when x is 0, The square root of 0 is simply 0. So 0 equals 0. The equation is true. Now, what about when x is 4? The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So this works as well. Therefore, both answers are correct. Here's another one. x raised to the 1 fourth plus 4 is equal to 7. So let's begin by subtracting both sides by 4. So x to the 1 fourth will be equal to 7 minus 4, which is 3. So now to get rid of the 1 fourth exponent, we need to raise both sides to the fourth power. 1 fourth times 4 is just 1. And 3 to the fourth, that's going to be 81. That's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. You can see it this way. 
3 times 3 is 9, and the other two 3's are 9. 9 times 9 is uh, 81. Now what about this one? The square root of 3x plus 4. Let's say it's equal to the square root of 4x plus 3. Go ahead and find the value of x. So in this example, we're going to take the square of both sides. And so the radicals will disappear. Therefore, 3x plus 4 will be equal to 4x plus 3. So now let's subtract both sides by 3x, and let's subtract both sides by 3. 4 minus 3 is 1, and 4x minus 3x is 1x, or simply x. So x is equal to 1. Try this one. What would you do in this example? If you have two radicals and a number, you don't want to square both sides with one side containing both radicals. You want to move one of the radicals to the other side. And let's say this is negative 2, by the way. Let's move this radical to this side. So this is going to be root 4x plus 9 and then minus 2. It's going to be positive on the right side. Now what we can do is take the square of both sides. On the left side we only have a radical and once we square it it's simply going to be 5 plus x. On the right side because we're dealing with a subtraction sign that separates the radical and the 2, we have to FOIL. It's going to be root 4x plus 9 minus 2 times another root 4x plus 9 minus 2. So once we multiply these two, radical 4x plus 9 times radical 4x plus 9, the radical will cancel and we're just going to get 4x plus 9. The radical times negative 2, that's going to be negative 2 root 4x plus 9. And we're going to get another similar term once we multiply these two together. And then finally, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Now, let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we can combine... 9 and 4, which is 13, so we have 4x plus 13, and we can also combine these two, which is going to be negative 4 root 4x plus 9. Now, because we have another radical, we need to get this radical by itself on one side of the equation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract both sides by x and by 5, and then I'm going to take this term and move it to the left side so it's going to become positive. So on the left we have positive 4 root 4x plus 9. And on the right, 4x minus x is 3x. 13 minus 5 is positive 8. So now, let's go ahead and square both sides. So we can completely get rid of the radical. The square of 4 is 16. We don't have to FOIL this term because the 4 is multiplied to the radical. The square of root 4x plus 9 is just going to be 4x plus 9. The square will cancel the radical. Now, 3x plus 8 squared, we need to FOIL it due to the plus sign that separates the 3x and the 8. So let's write it like this for now. On the left, let's distribute 16. 16 times 4, that's 64. And 16 times 9, that's 144. Now, let's FOIL. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times 8, that's 24x. 8 times 3x is another 24x. And finally, 8 times 8 is 64. 
So now let's combine like terms. So we have 64x plus 144, and that's equal to 9x squared plus 48x plus 64. So let's get rid of this, and let's subtract both sides by 64x and also by 144. So on the left, it's going to be 0, and then we have 9x squared. 48 minus 64 is 16, so negative 16x, and 64 minus 144, that's negative 80. So can we factor this particular trinomial? What would you say? 9 times negative 80 is negative 720. What two numbers multiply to negative 720 and add to negative 16? Let's see. Factors of 9 are 3 and 3. Factors of 80, 10 and 8. Factors of 10, 5 and 2. Factors of 8, 4 and 2, and so forth. This can help us to find factors of 720. So, if we use 10, this will be 10 and negative 72, which doesn't differ by negative 16, so we have to increase it. So, 15 goes into it. 15 is 5 times 3. If we divide 720 by 15, that's going to be negative 48. So we're getting closer, but we're not quite there yet. So let's see. We also have uh, 8 times 3. That's uh, 24. We could try that. Negative 720 divided by 24. That's negative 30. That differs by 6, so we went too far. We need something between 15 and 24. So let's see. What numbers can we choose between 15 and 24? Hmm. Well, we could try 18. That's 3 times 3 times 2. That's 18. So negative 720 divided by 18, that's uh, negative 40. So those two differ by 22. So we need something between 18 and 24. We could try 10 times 2, which is 20. Actually, let's see if that's going to work. 720 divided by 20, that's 36. So that works. That's what we need. So let's replace 16x squared, rather negative 16x squared, with negative 36x and positive 20x. And then let's factor by grouping. So now let's get rid of this stuff. So in the first two terms, let's take out the GCF, which is going to be 9x. By the way, if this problem is too difficult to factor, you can also use the quadratic formula. If we take out 9x, it's going to be x minus negative 36x divided by 9, or divided by 9x, that's going to be negative 4x. And from the last two terms, the greatest common factor is 20. 20x divided by 20 is x. Negative 80 divided by 20 is negative 4. And this should be just negative 4. That x uh, shouldn't be there. Let's get rid of that. Negative 36x divided by 9x is simply negative 4. In the first parentheses, we're going to have uh, x minus 4. And inside the second one, the stuff on the outside is going to go into it. That's uh, 9x plus 20. So to solve, we need to set each factor equal to 0. So in the first one, we can see that x is equal to 4. In the second one, we can move the 20 to the other side. It's going to be negative 20, and then divide by 9. So these are the two answers. But now let's make sure both answers are indeed correct. So x is equal to 4 and negative 20 over 9. 
And the original problem is root 5 plus x plus 2. And that's equal to root 4x plus 9. So let's replace x with 4. Five plus four, that's nine. Four times four is sixteen plus nine is twenty-five. The square root of nine is three, and the square root of twenty-five is five. Three plus two is five. So the equation is balanced, which means that x is indeed equal to four. Now, let's try negative 20 over 9. And I'm going to use the calculator for this. So 5 minus 20 over 9, that's 25 over 9. If you take the square root of that, this will give you 5 over 3. And 4 times negative 20 over 9, that's negative 80 over 9, plus 9, that's 1 over 9. And the square root of 1 over 9 is 1 over 3. And you could tell that this is not going to be equal to each other. 5 over 3 plus 2, that's 11 over 3, which is about 3.67. That doesn't equal 0.33. So therefore, the second answer is an extraneous solution. It doesn't work. And so this is why you need to check your answers, especially when you have multiple answers and if you're solving radical equations. Sometimes one of the answers might be an extraneous solution.